In this clip, we'll go through some basics of analyzing data with the functionality provided by the uh, Tidyverse. I'll get to what that is in a moment. This code is basically a replication of the examples I worked through on our Eclair web page. Uh, you can find the link in the notes to this video. And we have a section here on data analysis using the Tidyverse. And I'll basically go through this so you can see that in nicer edited form here. And let's go back to our IMD file. So we'll mainly ignore the text uh, in here and just go to the uh, to the code bits. If you're just writing a uh, piece of code file, you just use the pieces of code that are here in these what we call chunks. Firstly, we will need to load the package tidyverse. So we do that with library, make sure you have it installed first. And um, so here we have our function. So Tidyverse is a package which is a collection of all sorts of R packages. Uh, many of this, perhaps even all, I'm not that uh, not sure, uh, are written by that great man, Hadley Wickham. And uh, why not read a little bit about him uh, using this link? But that's not what we are here for. Uh, we load data. The data we use are ones which are available from our Eclair web page, a data set um, of a set of wages for uh, baseball players in 1993, a subset of uh, Major League Basketball players. You can download the file here. So I upload the data and they're now here in uh, in uh, this data frame, my data, we can check what sort of variable names we have in here. Uh, just all sorts of things amongst other salaries. So we are, we're going to be looking at who, um, uh, who earns the most. Uh, also some ethnic information here, whether someone's Hispanic, black, um, all sorts of other things. Uh, what we will also use is whether they are an all-star, uh, at least prior to the season 1993. There's also things about how many games they play and all sorts of stuff. Mo most of this we will uh, we will not use. On the Eclair web page, you can also find uh, more detailed variable descriptions. So the first thing we're going to do. Oh. And importantly, there's information about the position, first base, second base, shortstop, third base, outfield and catcher. These are the, the positions uh, which are there. Let's actually look at, a, um, at the data file here. Uh, if you look at this for a particular player here, uh, you can see here are here are the positions. So this first player here, for instance, that is a second base uh, player on the second base. The second uh, observation here is someone who is a shortstop. I don't really understand that much about baseball, um, but that doesn't really matter. So each, in fact, each player only seems to have one position, but that's for instance something you may want to, to check first. It's not quite clear, perhaps someone is uh, labeled in two positions or perhaps none. So how do we do this first? Um, we do this by creating a new variable. We call this new variable temp, and we create that as a row sum. Okay, but of course not of all the columns in our data file, but I'm only selecting the positional columns here. Okay, only the co positional columns and I calculate the row sums. These are all numerical data, zeros or ones. So what I want to see is really that this variable is one for everyone. That would indicate that every player is allocated to one position, not more and not less. And I'll check that by checking what the minimum value for temp is afterwards and what the maximum value for temp is. So yeah. I'll run this code and indeed both minimum and maximum are one. That's exactly what we wanted. So each player has exactly one position. 
Uh, so that's important for what comes. We, we will want to look at which position is paid most and uh, check whether there's any relationship to ethnicity in the pay. So this database is in some sense somewhat old-fashioned of having um, individual dummy variables for each position. Uh, a much neater way, especially in R, to deal with this is to create one variable, a uh, factor variable, that just indicates which position we are in. So what we're going to do is we create a new a new variable in our data file, I call it position. In our data frame, my data, I call it position. And I want the information, the positional information in that one variable. We start by just creating that new variable and as a, as a sort of uh, default position, I say everyone's in a is a first base player. Then I'll say, okay, let's go back to that variable, select all the observations where second base is equal to one. So select all second base players and then put a value of second base into that position variable. And then we do exactly the same, just selecting different positional players. Okay, shortstop, third base, outfield, catcher, and then at the end, I will just want to make sure that this is indeed a factor variable. Then we do the same with a race variable. We'll look at the result in a moment. I create a new variable race because the race information is captured in these three dummy variables, white, Hispanic, and black. And I create a, this new race variable that as a default, I put white in there, but then I select all the Hispanics and I'll put Hispanic into the value for race. And then I select all the black players, put black into as a value into the race variable. And again, I force it to be a factor. So let's run this chunk. And our variables are there. We may want to look at the data file. So if you go to the very back of the data file, we have our new variables, position and race. And um, I just ordered it now, didn't want that. But you can see the same, the thing which we hoped we would do, it looks like it has done that. Of course, you should make sure that it has indeed done what you wanted to do. So for instance, this first player here, I ordered it, so that may not be the first anymore, uh, which you have in your data file. That is neither a plug nor a Hispanic player. Oh, here, here we go. Hispanic, black, both of them are zero. I reordered this. Hispanic and black, both of them are zero. So back here we have a white player. That's correct. And let's look at the position for this first one. This is a catcher. So we have catcher back here. Right? Whenever you create new variables like that, please do make sure that uh, R actually did what you hoped it would do. So that's done. Now, how do we calculate uh, just some summary stats for variables? You don't need the tidyverse. You could, for instance, uh, just use the summary function. Okay, for instance, my data salary and summary my data position. Let's run these two things and what we get. And what we get here is the first part, because that is a numerical variable, we get some summary statistics. So that's the summary stats for salary. So where's our mean salary of 1,346,000. So that's a 93 even, and it was a lucrative job. And the summary for the positional variable, because that's a factor variable, is basically we get counts for each of the different positions. And you can see outfield players are the most numerous players in our data set. So, uh, of course, you could access very particular stats by using the respective function. Okay, so for instance, if I want the maximum value, maximum salary, I use the max function. I say the max of my data salary, the salary variable. Let's see what do we get? Six million, almost six and a half million was the maximum salary in '93. If you didn't want the max, but standard deviation or variance or mean or median, uh, 
you would use uh, these different commands. Let's actually just try the median. Median. Uh, let's run this. So the median income is 675,000. 50% uh, earn less and 50% earn more than that. But let's keep the max here. So now the first feature of using the functionality of the tidyverse is that we want to use what's called piping. Now, what does that do? So we first calculate something and then we explain what we did. And see this command here, my data, then this is what we call a pipe, percentage, larger percentage, group by position and then pipe and then summarize the mean of salary. So let's run it and let's see what we get. So as you can see, what we get is we get the data split up by position. So we get something for all positions and for, you, for each position, or we get grouped by position, perhaps I should use that language. And then for each of these groups, we get a mean salary. So what is this command? What did it do? It's best explained in words. We've taken our data frame, my data, and we send it to, you can read that as send it to, another function, a grouping function. And we ask that function to group the data by position. Now position has to be a variable in this data frame. If it isn't, you'll get an error message. So for instance, we can see I can just misspell it and try and run it again. And we get an error message. Uh, column position is unknown. Yes, of course, because it was misspelled. So like this, we can rerun it. So and then we send these grouped data to another function summarize. And what do we want to summarize? We want to see the mean salary for each of these groups. So in words, take the data frame my data, send group it by position, and then summarize the result of this grouping by showing the mean salary. And that's what we get. So in some sense, quite intuitive. And you should you, you could try with different you could try different things. So why don't we look at the variance rather than uh, the mean? Okay, and here we got the variance. So these are terribly large numbers. So let's look at standard deviations instead. And here's our standard deviation by group. All right, so that's all quite convenient. So this is what piping what piping does. So what you can see in here is actually that first basemen are the most well-paid ones and catches the least well-paid uh, position. In fact, as a link here, and you can see that this is still the case amongst these positions, this ordering hasn't changed. So let's get a little bit more complex. We have another example for pipe here. All that's really changed. So we at the beginning is the same. Take my data, send it to group by. Now we summarize. But now we're asking two things. Firstly, here's the mean salary again. So we want to see the mean salary again. But now what we do is we first say average dot salary equals mean salary. This sort of internally creates a new variable. And you'll see what that does in a moment. But we are also wanting to see something else, so separated by comma, we also want to see something else, a new variable, we call it number, and that should be the length of salary. So that's length of salary, does that make sense? So let's look at this. Well, here we go. Okay, firstly, what you can perhaps see, if you look at the mean salary, we still see the mean salaries, but as we call this average dot salary, this name now shows at the, as the title to the column. So that may make it slightly more readable or not, uh, but you can certainly use nice, uh, produce nice column names here. Now, what did the number do? It basically didn't, it took the salary variable, but rather than calculating its mean, its mean, it just checked how long is this set of data you're giving me for every position, because before that we group by position. So in some sense, or exactly what we get here is the number of observations. So there were 52 catches in our data set and their average salary was about $900,000. Okay, and again, we can see 
the most numerous position versus the outfield pay, uh, player position 136. Of course, we saw these statistics before here using the summary of position 136 outfielders. Of course, that's the same. But now you can see that in a nice table and it's always good when you have grouped statistics to know how many observations you have here. So one reason why that using the tidyverse to do data analysis is extremely nice is because you can do something like pivot tables if you were to use Excel. All right? Of course for many things you may still want to use Excel. Um, a pivot table is really a powerful function in Excel but how can we do that in R? Now we've already seen the group by function so that's very important uh, and uh, just to re enforce how that works we're basically doing the same the same as we did before just without the, the names in this case but this time we are grouping um, not by uh, the position but by plaque what was plaque that was the dummy variable or the binary variable that told us whether a player was of plaque if ethnicity or not Okay, so what happens if we do this? I know we already created a race variable, we get to that in a moment. Okay, so we are basically now seeing a plaque, we either have a zero or one outcome, 108 players in the data set for plaque, 245 for non-plaque, and you can see that, uh, well, plaques earn on average more than non-plaques. Uh, perhaps on first instance, someone surprisingly knowing that of course there's the um, everything else being equal um, plaque employees in the US possibly still earn less and certainly in 1993 did so everything else being equal so what about the third type apart from whites and plaques the third type of um, ethnicity was Hispanics so let's just group by Hispanics same otherwise same command so here you can see that we have 64 Hispanics. Their average salary is smaller than everyone else's. So here under 289, which are not Hispanic, they're either white or black, at least uh, according to the data file. And they earn more than the Hispanics. Okay, so his Hispanics earn uh, quite little. So we have these three uh, groups and they're all encoded uh, in our new race variable. So actually, let's have a group by race. And here we can see 108 black, 64 Hispanics, 181 whites, and still it's the case that blacks on average earn the most, a bit more than one and a half million whites, 1.3 million about, and Hispanics 1 million on average. So perhaps that's still slightly surprising but of course we know that by just reporting summary statistics like these we have to be very careful because there, there will be other factors that are hiding important differentiation between behind these groups important factors that are relevant for uh, the salary so the next important function in the tidyverse we want to learn is the filter function Okay, so in all of these tables which we've shown before, we always, however we group them, we, but we always showed all the variables. And sometimes you don't want all the observations. Sometimes you don't want to show all the observations. So for instance, we have this variable all star uh, in, uh, in our data set. And there's also a variable called uh, years all star. That's the number of years someone has been an all star by the season 1993. So if someone has an entry of zero here, they're at that stage, not an all-star player. So here we have a line of command. Let's read this before we look at it and see where we can predict what the outcome should be. We're sending the my data data frame to a filter function. And we want to filter by function years all star and we only want those observations where that value is zero. So we only want non all star players. Then we send the result and we send it to the group by function and we then want to group by position. And then we send that result and we want to summarize 
and what you want to see in our sum in our summarized table we want to see again the number of observations and the average salary so let's run this so our table looks very much like a table we had before with number and average salary but the observation shouldn't be the same because now we should have filtered out all all-star players or sort of filtered in all non-all-star players yeah, that's what we did here all players with zero years as all-stars so let's look at catcher at the catcher position here we have 42 if we compare this to the above number that 42 should be smaller than the number of catchers we had before so let's see catchers we had 52 okay so it means in our data set are 10 all-star catchers and 42 non-all-star catchers of course you could run exactly the same just to filter in all all-star players so those where the years as all-stars is larger than zero let's do that here we can compare the two tables and clearly you can see that being an all-star is associated to having higher salaries okay so here's the the 10 all-star catchers their average salary is a bit over 2 million whereas the non all-star catchers on average earn about 600,000 again if you've done any sort of statistics you know ho oh, 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 oh. just because we have this correlation between whether you're an all-star and the salary doesn't mean that this is the reason why you earn higher salaries okay and of course we'll possibly understand that you only get become an all-star because you're a good player and it's if you're a good player or very good player that's because you get a good salary that by itself doesn't mean that there isn't just some sort of premium for also being an all-star maybe extra marketing benefits you could capitalize on as a player um, but we can't say that from this analysis so another useful tool in uh, your new tidyverse toolbox is the arrange function so let's ha see how we use this so let's look at this here this is basically the same as before where we selected all the non all-star players okay so up until here it's the same but then at the end we sent the result and say arrange by average salary average salary being the new variable which we defined here and that's another reason why we don't just say mean salary but we create this new internally this new variable average dot salary because we can refer to that in a later command in in the same sort of piping sequence so what's that mean arrange this is basically sorting okay so let's just run this and now you can see that we have now sorted the positions by salary well catcher is still be uh, the lower uh, the lowest paid position here but here you can see for the non all-star players turns out that being in the outfield is uh, the highest paid position now I'm here possibly betraying my ignorance about baseball I wouldn't I wouldn't know why that is the case or whether perhaps you know um, um, outfield stands for something I, did, I really don't know um, if you have a comment on this please put it into the uh, comments to this video I'd love to learn so this is sli a slightly changed ordering of course uh, when compared to um, not having this range uh, column and see we would have had it ordered as catcher first base out first base outfield second base shortstop third base that's just the ordering of the factor variable but now we ordered according to the salary that's very useful so what we've so far done is what I just called simple pivot tables we really only spliced the data according to one criterion here the position let's look at something more complicated and let's call it double pivot tables but it could be multiple variable pivot tables so what we want to do is we want to group by more than one group and this is very actually very straightforward to do 
So let's read this command and see whether we can predict what happens. We take the my data data frame, we pipe it or send it to the group by function. We want R to group by position and race, and the result we send to the summarize function, and we want to see the average salary again, the mean salary. Now, so let's see and see how this how this looks like. So now you can see that for every position, we now have three subgroups. So you have catcher black, catcher Hispanic, catcher white, and their respective average salaries. First base, black, Hispanic, white. Outfield, black, Hispanic, white, and so forth. And we could go to the last part of the uh, um, of the table. So this has all the useful information but now what we want to do and you may have seen many tables like this is it's a bit awkward to have sort of both position and race in the rows what we now want to do is we want to rearrange this table where say positions are in the rows but rays are represented by different columns and then in the core of the table we have the average salary and we achieve this by sending the result of this, so that means by extending this command with another pipe in the back, we'll see how in a moment, with another useful function, and that's the spread function. Basically, we want to spread out the results a little bit nicer. So, how do we do this? Let's look at this. So, here we again have just what we've seen so far send my data to group by position at race and then summarize the average salary but then we send the result or we pipe it to spread and then race comma average salary now if you are uh, an R user with anything higher than a white belt so a yellow belt or anything higher you know that to, to see how functions are used exactly you either ask Dr. Google or your first uh, stop maybe question mark and then the name of the function. So question mark spread, for instance. And here in our help window, we'll, uh, we'll get this. And you can here learn how to use the spread function. Now you can see that it asks for a number of inputs okay and what it basically says give me your data then the key that's the column names and then the values what you would want to see in the in the center of the table now when we use this command uh, as part of a piping uh, action the pipes basically define what that first input is okay so we are actually in the piping we are leaving away that first input because that's just where are we? We're here. That's just whatever comes from the pipe at this stage. Okay? And basically what that is, is this table. Okay? Because we know we've run that pipe up until here. And that's just that table above. So that's the input. And then we are, Spread wants to know as a second, what's the key? What should be the column names? And then value. These are the arguments passed. And they are in the center of the table. We'll see that in a moment. So we want rays as columns and then we want to see the average salary uh, variable. So let's run this. And here we have a wonderful little table. Okay. We here. here we have a wonderful little table. We have positions in rows. We have different races in, uh, in the columns and here these values in the middle, these are the average salaries. So let's just check. So if you look at catcher, for instance, you can actually see that for the catchers, you can see Hispanics earn most on average. On the first base, you can see white players earn most. In the outfield, it's black players. Second base, Again, we are looking at black players, short stops. It's uh, where we here, black players, 2 million, Hispanics, 700,000, and whites, a bit more than 1 million. So it would be black players. So there's an awful lot of variation 
I mean, it possibly already tells you there's certainly more to the salary data than just race and position, other things. And most likely it matters which team you play, what sort of fan base the teams have. And of course, all of these things may be correlated with any of these variables, uh, especially the race variable. But I can't really go into that anymore here. What we have shown here is how to create this this sort of table. Now, I want you just to perhaps see that so far we group by two, you can group by more than two positions. So here, for instance, we have are you an all-star player position and race, and then we can summarize salary, and then we can uh, spread again, and then we can attach a last arrange. So we can then arrange the table according to all-stars or not. So let's see what we see here. Okay, again, we have basically a table like we saw before, but now it's also split according to whether a player is an all star or not. Okay, and we have arranged by all stars, so it's such that those which are not all stars, they these are the first column and uh, the first rows, and then we have all star players. That table continues on a little bit here. Okay. So this is really all I wanted to show you to give you first a sniff of the power of the uh, doing data analysis with the tidyverse.